According to Denver Broncos wide receiver Tim Patrick, it's going to be scary this season. Best believe that. As we approach the NFL draft here today, could the Denver Broncos trade back into round one? Could they trade up tomorrow into round two? Sarah Bettinger and myself, we weigh the pros and cons and much more. Plus, we react to Dwayne Stukes' press conference at the UCL Training Center on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Happy draft day to any of you out there listening. The Denver Broncos will not be on the clock here tonight as planned. Could they trade up into round one? These are a lot of questions we'll ask on today's episode. Lockdown Broncos here on Draft Day. Welcome into the show. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, joined alongside by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown Network and 9 News Broncos country. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, whether it's free and available on your favorite audio podcasting platform, whether it's here where you're watching us on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button. Smash that like button for the algorithm as well. Sarah, my friend, hey, it is officially draft day. The moment that a lot of people in the NFL community have been waiting for. The Broncos, no round one draft here today. But you know what? Going into the draft, there's a lot of uncertainties, particularly in this year's draft class. Could the Denver Broncos trade back into round one? Is this completely out of the picture here for the Broncos? Well, I feel, Cody, going into this night that, man, it's going to be kind of like when the Broncos play Thursday night football, they get themselves a nice, convincing, decisive W, and then on Sunday, we just get to sit around and watch the Red Zone channel all day while other teams fight and scrap, and 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 they haven't won or lost their games yet. They've still got to earn it out there. So that's kind of how I'm approaching round one of the drafts. I know George Payton joked, they're going to spend some time you know, watching Russell Wilson highlights. But, hey, I mean, how long are those highlights going to last? And how much is George Payton going to be itching to get back into round one? Because we know last year he did think about doing that, right? I mean, the Broncos were interested reportedly in moving back into the first round for Jalen Phillips, the pass rusher who ended up going to the Miami Dolphins. So is that itch going to be you know, there for George Payton? Again, I'm sure as a general manager, if he's anything like all the other people out there on Twitter who love being general manager, creating mock drafts, I'm sure George Payton is going to consider it. But you can't help but wonder, Cody, is that price going to be too prohibitive? We know that trading back into the first round, even if you have a higher second round selection, teams kind of ask an arm and a leg to, to get out of the first round because we got that fifth year contract option. Yeah. You got the ability to get, obviously, a better prospect. And if you're trying to trade into the first round, teams are probably thinking to themselves like, well, I mean, I've got all the leverage here. I've got the pick. You don't have the pick. So it really favors the team that's sitting in the back end of the first round. I don't know. To me, I feel like the cost could be a little prohibitive. But then again, will there be a player there that the Broncos can't live without? That's a good question, especially in the 20s, too, and even the late 20s. What players are available in the back end there that you believe, like, hey, we you know, we can't miss out on this guy? Like, I don't think Trey McBride is going to go round one. I think he'll go mid-second, late-second round. Heck, he could even drop further than that. Like, there's all sorts of scenarios. We don't know really how the draft will play out here. But for this Denver Broncos football team, as you mentioned, they have zero leverage in the situation. They have nothing to offer, really, in the future for some of these other teams. The, the cost to be able to move from 64 – up 30 spots potentially, or even higher. Sarah, like you said, that is so unlikely now because the cost to be able to do that almost doesn't make sense for this Broncos team. I think if anything, we could see the Broncos trade back a little bit and maybe acquire more capital next year to be able to move up if they want to. I don't know. There's so many situations that are potentially out there right now. It, going back to what George Payton has said about all the all the depth in this year's draft, like, do you believe a 64 you can get a really good depth player there? I think that the Broncos, through at least uh, the top 115 picks in this year's NFL draft, I think they can get some really good depth players. And then guys on the backer ends of the draft, that could be developmental pieces that will continue to grow within the system and maybe not contribute right away, which is okay, according to George Payton. But let's talk about a more likely scenario. Could the Denver Broncos trade up into round two? This will obviously be something that we look forward to maybe tomorrow because they pick at 64. Could they trade up several spots? You know, I think it's easier to move up in round two on the back end of being in round two rather than being in the back end of round two, moving up to the first round. That's just very unlikely. But I could see the Broncos maybe trading up into round two what type of prospect could they trade up into round two to get, though? That's a bigger question here. 
it is the bigger question because I think right now you look at the roster and if you're if you're trading up to get somebody right on day two, day two of the draft, you're predicting that that player is going to be a starter for you within a year or two. Like you said, George Payton knows that these guys coming in, they don't have to contribute right away, but they do need to be able to contribute right away if the need arises. Just like we saw last year with all those rookies that came in, including Patrick Sertan, none of them were week one starters for the Denver Broncos, including the top pick of the draft. So these guys have to be able to contribute at some point. And I think there's more proof of concept here for the Broncos trading back. Like you said, Cody, if they are going to trade up, I would say it has to probably be for an offensive tackle or an edge guy, just because those are two premium positions and you're not picking in the first round or the second round as of right now of the 2023 NFL draft, which means you're not going to get a premium prospect at either of those two positions yeah. for the next two years. So that's where you maybe consider trading up if it costs like, say, pick number 96, maybe pick 115 or 116 to move from 64 up into the late 30s or early 40s and get an offensive tackle or an edge player that you could feel could really be a difference maker for you. Then you still have pick 75. You still have another pick in the fourth round. So I think the Broncos have flexibility to move up in round two, which is why George Payton acknowledged, hey, that's way more realistic than moving into round one. I know it's maybe the difference between eight to 10 spots, but it's still a big difference on that trade value chart, which I know that like teams aren't strict about using that, but oftentimes, more often than not, actually, you'll see that the trade value chart does line up with the trades that get made. Yeah. So I think that that's something to seriously consider here, but I'm with you, Cody. I think if you move back in this draft, there's proof of concept from last year's class that moving back, you can get multiple impact players if you trade back even in the even in the third round so the, the broncos did that last year when they got quinn miners and baron browning after moving down twice i believe it was they moved down into the into the 70s maybe or or something like that even if they didn't move down twice they got two third round picks for the price of one which is exactly what i think they should try to do in this draft but accumulate for next season so I like both ideas, honestly. If you feel like there's an edge guy up there or a tackle that could be a starter for you sooner than later, go ahead and move up and get him. You just have a smaller draft class this year and next year. But if you move down, the options are endless. Well, it makes sense right now. The Broncos roster is officially at 69 players right now, and they have to fill out a 90-man roster between draft picks, undrafted rookie free agents, and bringing in maybe some other veteran guys that have been holding tryouts, which will obviously lead us to the Broncos making a signing on Wednesday for the Denver Broncos as they continue practice at the UCL Training Center. we got to hear a little bit from Tim Patrick and his experience going to work with Russell Wilson in California. What was that like, and how has that helped speed up the process here with the Denver Broncos? We get to that coming up here in just a moment but before we do that let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode lockdown broncos that's our good friends over there at blue nile blue nile.com has fine jewelry options for every mom and shop high quality classic diamond earrings elegant tennis bracelets and gemstone pendant necklaces today and mark mother's day with something enduring with classic diamond stud earrings elegant tennis bracelets birthstone pendants as i mentioned and so much more when you go to blue nile.com and this mother's day you can give your mom something that she'll treasure forever with fine jewelry from blue nile.com and locked on sports listeners get $50 off of 500 This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use promo code Locked On. That's promo code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, it ships free, and it arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. And as we jump into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, once again, Broncos country, mile high. Salute to you. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. Don't forget tonight, go to the Locked On NFL YouTube channel for the Locked On NFL Draft live show in studio in Dallas, Texas, hosted by K90 Stevens, Peter Bukowski, Eric Crocker, Ryan Tracy, plus featuring the local experts on the teams that all make the picks in the NFL Draft for their teams reacting to the news, reacting to the team fit you get that in a live studio show the locked on nfl youtube page make sure you set your dial set your reminders to that as well it's going to be a great event that goes on tonight the locked on nfl youtube page sarah as we continue to go about on today's episode locked on broncos yesterday we got to hear from timmy p uh, at the press conference following day three of broncos ota mini camp practice that they have going on at the ucl uh, ucl training center in inglewood colorado before we get into some of the tim patrick stuff the broncos did make a roster move they signed a cornerback and 
Blesson Austin is signing with the team here. He was a guy that spent the last couple of days trying out with the organization, and he's already got starting experience in the NFL playing for both the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Jets. What is it that you can tell Broncos country a little bit more about this signing? Is this somebody who may be in line for the active roster? Do you think this could be a camp body or just one of the 90-man roster spot bodies coming into training camp? I think initially this is, to me, a a clear 90-man roster spot move. But at the same time, you do a little bit of digging here, Cody. Like you mentioned, he's been a starter in the NFL. He actually played 89% of the snaps for the New York Jets just two years ago, back in 2020. So he's been playing for a couple years now. He played this past season for the Seattle Seahawks. So you can't help but wonder how much maybe Russell Wilson played into this move, if at all, because we know Russell is going to be, you know. He's what did George Payne say to, to him, too? Like, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about exactly. this guy? Okay. Going up against sense. him in practice, right? I mean, that that's a factor in this. Obvi- ab- absolutely. I think you got to factor those things in. And, and that's a cool thing about it. So I think with his starting experience, and he's only 25 years old as well, uh, I'm, I'm looking at his page on Pro Football Reference, Cody. So I think that there's something – I think there's something to this. A sixth round pick in the 2019 NFL draft out of Rutgers. Young guy. And, yeah. and didn't, he's a young guy. So I, I like that. I like this kind of pickup. And I think with his experience, doesn't this kind of remind you a little bit maybe of the Nate Hairston pickup that the yeah. Broncos made, where it was kind of just kind of an unassuming move on the surface? But then Nate Hairston comes out and he actually does pretty well and ends up going out and getting a contract in this offseason with the Minnesota Vikings. So maybe a, maybe a little Nate Harrison replacement. I know that seems kind of trivial, but as you're rounding out a roster and talking about guys that play different roles, I mean, this puts the Broncos, I would say, at at least five deep on the cornerback depth chart. Which would be good, too. And, man, I just tell you what, I'm super excited for Nate Harrison. That's one guy I had. Like, for me, I love DB play. You all know this. But I felt like there were some things about Nate Harrison's game that made him so under the radar. Like, he was evolving and becoming greater every single day, every single week, whether on special teams, whether in that rotational role. I was like, man, Minnesota got a good one, reuniting him with Ed Donatale. So, uh, if you're a Vikings fan, somehow listen to this podcast, you got a good one. And Nate Harrison, excited to watch him and Coach Donatale ball out this season and uh, see how things go for them there. Now get on to the Tim Patrick news here. Uh, obviously for him, it's been a great offseason. Going back to last season, in season was extended on a three-year deal. And he even mentioned, uh, you know, alluded a little bit about, hey, like a three-year deal means nothing. Like in a sense, like in the business side of the NFL. And, and we'll get to what that means coming up here in just a moment. But one of the things he said is like, it's going to be a scary season this season. Best believe that, which, you know, I think everyone's exciting. But it's all about like learning how Russell Wilson as a quarterback. Like one thing we've seen from them going in the, the compound in San Diego, Tim Patrick, Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, Kitchen Handler, Kendall Hinton, Albert Oak Webunam, uh, even uh, Josh Johnson, like all these guys, Andrew Beck going there. They're learning how Russ conducts himself. They're learning how Russ operates in offense. And this is something that these Broncos players have, haven't had before, simply. Like everything's been coach oriented. Russell Wilson, like they're going to build into what Coach Hackett wants to do, but. Russell Wilson is operating this thing in a way that these guys have never experienced before in their careers. And I think that's really cool. You know, I think that's really cool because Russell Wilson has a certain level of expectations that he, you know, he's expecting big things out of these guys. And and just like any great leader, he's not, he's not asking them to do something that he's not willing to do himself. Right. I mean, we talked about the fact that Russ is, you know, he's out there memorizing the playbook, obsessing over it is what somebody (laughs) said. I can't remember if that was coach or who. Yeah, it was coach Hackett. uh, Coach Hackett said that. So he's obsessing over the playbook. And, and I love Tim Patrick's approach, too. I mean, he's he's definitely got that uh, Rod Smith vibe. I don't know how many people really followed Rod Smith's career who are who are listening to this podcast or if they've become Broncos fans since Russell Wilson got you know traded to the team. But Rod Smith and Tim Patrick are very similar in a lot of ways. Just their yeah. attitude towards – you remember Rod Wilson – Rod, uh, Rod Smith's quote about uh, – he said, you can't make the club if you're always in the tub or, you know, things yeah. like that. I just get the same <laughs> type of vibe from uh, from Tim Patrick. You know, he's just a, a hardworking guy. And I love that he's talking about, you know, he wants to live up to those expectations. Like they got a great jump start on everything out in California, out in San Diego. And he said it made a huge difference because there's a lot in the offense. I thought I thought found this comment interesting he said that the offense is kind of like combining three into one and and he didn't really expound much on that but what I took from that is that he's talking about the way that Russell Wilson communicates it versus the playbook versus things that you know etc different things like that so and it's cool that they're going to be going back but you know I, I love Tim Patrick's mentality Cody he he is a true undrafted free agent mentality always working always scraping and clawing and he had a cool quote I think 
uh, about ask, you know, when he was asked about, Hey, do you have some security now with your new deal? Yeah, no, this is an interesting one too. And this is why I love Tim Patrick. He's never comfortable, which is good. I think like the moment you get too deep into your comfort zone in life, like not just as a football player, but in life, like you start to let certain things slip. And I think for Tim Patrick, He's got a really strong mentality. Our good friend Mario Vitenzi works on Tim Patrick all the time. And one of the things he says, like, hey, Tim is Tim's a great dude. Like, he is a guy that's always focused, always trying to get better, which is something that we love to see here. And for Tim, one thing he was asked, you know, security with the three-year contract extension, he said, didn't Von Miller get traded last year? Ain't no security in this league, which is spot on. It doesn't matter. Like, in the way that some of these contracts are now formulated, you could have a three-year deal, but essentially the team has an out after two years or even after one year if they really wanted to. That is very interesting. But, you know, like for Tim Patrick, ever since coming into the NFL, Sarah, he's always had to prove himself. He's always had a chip on his shoulder. The Broncos did a really cool thing where they're reading some scouting reports uh, that were said about them, uh, about these players when they were coming up out of the NFL draft process. And they said something about Tim Patrick not being reliable with the catch. And he's like, okay, 2020 didn't have a single drop. Like, this is where Timmy P has evolved. And he's just continued to work really hard. And he's got that chip on his shoulder. I personally, Sarah, I love it. I think Timmy P's a beast. And I think that in this offense, things can expand. Like he's been the best receiver in the last two years for Denver. I mean, he's had 12 total touchdowns in two seasons. He's been so reliable. I think Tim Patrick is the ultimate version of being QB proof. It doesn't matter who your quarterback is, whether he's great or he's not great. Tim Patrick, he's going to produce. And I think that he bodes really well in the system here with Russell Wilson and with Nathaniel Hackett. But Sarah, you know, I think the things that Broncos country want to know about too, like Special teams has to be better here in 2022. New special teams coordinator Dwayne Stoops had a lot to say, and he kind of imprinted his model, his blueprint, his vision for special teams as a straight shooter. What does that mean, and who did he pinpoint exactly by name as people to keep an eye on? We get to that coming up here in just a moment, but before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode. Show it to good friends over there, BetOnline.net. And BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information, and you can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the major league baseball season bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs esports and more so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at betonline.net bet online where the game starts all right, sir, as we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Once again, Broncos country, thank you for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day, your daily go-to podcast for all Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. We appreciate you so much, your interaction. If you love the show, as is, make sure you're doing us a favor. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of objective Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage where you feel like you're part of the conversation because Broncos country, you are part of the conversation. That's how Sarah and I want to operate things here over at the podcast. Sarah, let's get to special teams here. New special teams coordinator Dwayne Stukes coming in in a no-nonsense kind of mentality here. And for special teams, one thing we saw with Tom McMahon last season, very analytical, right? But also very open about throwing out praise to all these players. Unfortunately, the unit really did kind of stink it up for the team last season. They did struggle with consistency. There were moments where they'd have a great game, and then there'd be moments where they'd really ruin the game for the rest of the team there. But Dwayne Stukes is coming in and, and not pulling any punches, like being able to say, like, hey, you're going to get like special teams. Like you're trying to make an NFL roster. Guys are going to do whatever they can to try to impress you. But for him, he's not fooled by any of the smoke and mirrors. He's sticking to the tape and to what he sees. And and on that, you know, he was asked about last year's unit and he he came right out. He set the tone. He's like, you seriously think I is that a real question? You seriously think I didn't watch last year's last year's unit, last year's tape? It's like, dang, OK, I mean, you better bring the, the legit questions when you're talking to this guy. And and I think there there were some good questions brought to him, Cody, but he gave off such an interesting vibe. No nonsense. Tough to impress. Which, which leads me to believe that when he does call out guys by name, it's going to be super meaningful. And I think it's very meaningful, the two names that he specifically mentioned. Mm. He specifically singled out two core special teams players on this roster right now, and one of them might be really shocking to a lot of fans. Obviously, one, Tyree Cleveland. I mean, back in the yeah. 2020 NFL draft when the Broncos – picked him he was kind of known at florida for his special teams ability and, and i think that's obviously going to be the case still with the denver broncos and does that cement his spot on the 53 man roster i guess we're fixing to find out on that one but the other name that he brought up cody was super super interesting aaron patrick a guy that the broncos poached off of the jaguars practice squad last year early in the season He's been dubbed by Dwayne yeah. Stukes as a core special teams player, and he wouldn't name other other 
core players besides that. But I found that name to be particularly interesting. He's an edge rusher too. <laughs> he's an edge rusher. I love it. So how might this work out for this Broncos team? Like I said, you know, if, if Aaron Patrick isn't going to be a guy that's going to be consistent in the Broncos defensive rotation, I mean, uh, they obviously see enough in him, I think, defensively to keep him on the roster, to promote him to the active spot, which I think they did for a little bit last season. But then outside of that, too, like being able to get in there on special teams, how many guys did the Broncos rely on last year? They're like first-year guys. Like I remember the Barrington Wades that were contributing on special teams and some of the other guys like the Jonas Griffiths at first, and those guys have made a name for themselves. Now you're giving a guy who is an edge rusher, which a lot of people say, hey, this is the biggest position you need for this Denver Broncos football team. What if you have a guy on the roster that is really under the radar, right? We talk so much about, oh, what about the Shaquille Barrett? Shaq was undrafted. He was an undrafted rookie free agent. Imagine what Aaron Patrick can grow into if he has the right environment, has the right system around, gets the right opportunities. So the fact that Dwayne Stukes is naming him and naming Tyree Cleveland, I think that bodes well because there was a time when Tyree Cleveland got released from this Broncos team last season, and we were wondering, hey, is he going to make it? I think special teams is a great place for him to contribute as a gunner, as somebody has a potential return option for this football team as well. He's been able to do a little bit of both that. So obviously some high praise there for Dwayne Stukes. Now, outside of that, too, there's a lot of hype in Broncos country about a particular punter in this year's NFL draft. Matt Areza out of San Diego State. Everybody's talking about it. And obviously Darren Muji has those ties there, too. And he joked about it in his pre-draft press conference. But, uh, yep, move him up the board. Move him up the board. But, uh, you know, Dwayne Stukes kind of providing a little bit of a sober reminder that, hey, the Broncos have two punters on the roster as is. Yeah, exactly. I think that's worth noting at this point. He even said, like, we got guys that can do that. After, when he was asked, hey, did you actually, did you watch him? And he said, yeah, I watched him. You know, we got guys that can do exactly what he does. And and I think that there's some validity to that. Some of that might just be, you know, he's he's pumping gas out there just to say what he <laughs> needs to say. Because so, he said, he acknowledged, like, people are listening to this. So there's only so much you can actually say. And he also talked about the return specialist situation. So it's a good it's a good listen for Broncos country to go back and kind of watch a little under 10 minutes of Dwayne Stukes addressing the media. But specifically in regards to the punt god, I mean, are we going to have a little friction in the draft room between Muji and Dwayne Stukes? Or Stukes <laughs> is like, hey, we got two guys. And Muji's like, no, we need the San Diego State guy. I, by the way, be watching out for San Diego State guys in this draft, apparently, because I wonder yeah. if George Payton's going to say, hey, you, you want to go to bat for this guy? We'll take him, whether it's uh, whether it's the punt god or somebody else. But Man. it's fascinating to see. <laughs> I think the Broncos – the interesting thing, too, about this is Corliss Waitman, the other puncher, Cody, if his average would have held up last season, he would have led the league in average yards per punt. So in yeah. a couple of games with the Pittsburgh Steelers, he had the highest average – in the NFL over 50 yards per kick. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, do, do the Broncos really need the punt? God, everybody loves him. The fact that he runs like a four five, six 40 yard dash <laughs> is kind of insane. So somebody's going to get the punt God and somebody's going to be very happy about it. I don't know if it'll be the Broncos, but just imagine uh, him at that altitude in the mile high. That would be fun to watch. Yeah. I'm excited to see how it all plays out for special teams. And obviously for coach Stukes in his first season with the Denver Broncos as their special teams coordinator, Broncos country. What'd you think of today's episode? Lockdown Broncos, the NFL draft this night. You see the Broncos maybe trying to make a play to move back into round one, even though it seems very unlikely. What do you think they're going to do? Are they going to stay put at 64 tomorrow? Make sure you drop your comments down below here on YouTube or tweet us on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL at Sarah Bettinger at Lockdown Broncos. Well, that will wrap up today's episode of the show. Broncos country, enjoy your evening. Like Sarah said, enjoy the draft. Have fun. We'll see if the Broncos make any moves. And if not, we ride tomorrow. <laughs>